All right. Hello, I'm Alec Garza Galindo, and today I'm here to talk to you about linked data filtering and estimation of missing values using the Savitsky Gole filter and the Kalman filter. In this talk, I want to take you through what is linked data in terms of using it for predictive models, what sorts of problems we deal with when we use this data, and what solutions and what methods we use to try to improve the quality of the data that we're using. So linked data, in terms of what we'd like to be using, is data that when, that when viewed in the aggregate is more useful than when viewed individually. So for our data set, we have the continuous glucose sensor, heart rate sensor, GPS sensor, and an energy monitor taken from type 1 diabetic patients. And we're hoping that by looking at all of this data as a whole, we could get more information out of it than just by studying just glucose or just the heart rate. Now, this time series data is useful because it's used in clinical predictive modeling, such as modeling whether uh, a child will suffer from cardiac arrest while in the hospital and modeling whether a patient will be able to survive their stay in intensive care. The problem with using this data, though, is it's hard to quantify the quality of the data that you're getting and its effects on these predictive models. For example, the sensors could be noisy, there could be blackouts in the readings, there could be erroneous readings, and the sensors could be of differing quality. In one case, we had a temperature sensor on an oil rig from the, that, from the company M Intelligence that is also sponsoring this internship that dropped below absolute zero, so we're hoping that there's a little bit of an erroneous reading there and that we want to be able to capture that. Now, the goal of this project is to improve the quality of the data that we're using for these models. So we want to qualify or quantify the quality of the data that we're getting. In our case, if we model it as a Gaussian distribution, we want to be able to predict what the mean is and also what the variance is in the data. We want to be able to handle the missing and erroneous values. So you can imagine this is a forecasting and a smoothing problem. Thank you. And we'd also like to be able to infer the hidden state from these noisy observations, so a filtering problem. Now, the first approach that we tried is called the savitsky gole filter. And this picture is supposed to give you an intuitive sense of how it works. The uh, red points are data, just data points, and the blue line is the fitted curve. And the savitsky gole filter is interested in giving you a filtered value, let's see, of the time, or the data point in the middle of this set of data points. So at time three, what the Savitsky filter or Savitsky Gole filter does in order to get a smooth value is it takes a small window ahead of the data point you're interested in and a small window behind the data point you're interested in and fits a polynomial to it and then evaluates it at the midpoint to get a new value for the filtered, a new smooth and filtered data value for the point at time equals three. And we applied this to glucose levels taken from a patient with type 1 diabetes. And the top curve here is the unfiltered glucose. And the bottom curve here is the filter glucose shifted down by 60. And you can see that the filter glucose appears a lot less noisy and it's easier to follow the trend and the pattern in the data with your eye, at least. What the Savixi Goli filter is also good at is preserving the shapes within the data. A lot of the higher frequency components of the signal get squashed when you use low pass filters and filters like that. So this is at least a very visually pleasing way to look at the data. Unfortunately, it's hard to quantify exactly how good this is as a filter. And it also works only on a single data stream. So we wanted to try to move to a multivariate filter, and that's the Kalman filter. And what the Kalman filter does is it estimates the state of a linear dynamical system from noisy measurements. So f from these equations, x is your state, and basically says that your state at the current time is a mix of the state at the previous time plus some input plus some noise. And your observation is the state times this H matrix or this transformation to an observation matrix plus some noise as well. The F matrix here is your state transition matrix and the B matrix here is your control input matrix and the H again transforms what you have as your state into what you actually observe. 
and the WK, or WK and VFK are noise. So what you do with the common filter is you estimate what your state is using this F matrix and B matrix, and then you compare it to what you actually observe, and you get an estimate of what the mean is, or the X of K at the bottom of this, and your variance, the P of K, in the bottom circle there. And you go over the data, filtering it at each point in time. And we applied this to power and heart rate data taken from a patient riding on a bicycle to get the following curves. The top curves are the power, and the bottom two curves are the heart rate. So what you can see is, just focusing on the bottom two curves here, with the turquoise one being the smooth value for the heart rate and the green one being the unfiltered value for the heart rate, is that it appears to soften some of the peaks in the data. And as, as you can see, we have a, uh, a heart rate that drops down to zero, which we hope was an erroneous reading as well, and that our patient didn't die while on this bicycle. And that the common filter and common filtered version and the observed heart rate differ significantly. So we're hoping that we can quantify that by looking at the variance at that point and seeing that it's high and that there's something interesting happening here. Either it's an erroneous reading or an event is occurring, such as maybe the patient actually did have their heart stop. The problem with using the common filter with this data, though, is that it's hard to fit just raw data into this model. It models linear systems, and looking at the glucose levels, I'm sure you can see that that's hard to parameterize in a single matrix. You can't really look at it and say, oh, this is just the identity matrix or something. So the next phase in this project is to use a maximum likelihood algorithm in order to estimate these parameters. You see in the row here, the supplied by user row, that those F, B, Q, R, and H matrices are supposed to be given to this filter. However, it's hard to know these parameters, and so with the maximum likelihood algorithm, we're going to try to give you a better estimate of what those are in order that can be done a little better estimate than just hand tuning the parameters. We'd also, with the, the goal of this, again, being to quantify what is the quality of this data, or in the common filter terms, what's the variance, what does it mean, what is the hidden state, how confident are we that the measurement we're getting is actually good. Also, filtering data, which is what the common filter, as a filter does, and forecasting the data in the events where you're missing data from a blackout or something like that. All with the goal, of course, of saving some lives and using this, improving the data quality given to these predictive models so that they can tell when if traumatic events may occur. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Zhao Sheng Zhang for being my mentor at the Intelligence Corporation, Dr. Juan Frias and Team Type 1 for providing data, Dr. Nate Heinzman for being the mentor for this program, CalIT2 for hosting us, I Dash and DME, DBMI for having this program, and the NIH and NLM for uh, the short-term funding grants for this. Thank you.